This movie is a great cast. What would you say is your funniest or most memorable moment from filming? Actually shooting in Jamaica. We shot the film in Jamaica and London and there was a moment where we were shooting in a, um, an area called Rose Gardens where essentially the whole community came out. Some of them were extra, some of them just wanted to be a part of the film uh, as a spectator. And it was just a really beautiful moment, you know, to see a whole community sort of like step back in time, you know, the, in the part of that film, it was the 1970s, everyone dressed up. It was like this big fancy dress party and everyone was really, really up for it up until like six in the morning. It was great. Did you just say whoever wants to come join in, bring some 70s clothes or? No, actually, <laughs> interestingly enough, you know, we were very lucky. There was a, a little, little rivalry between another community. It was a very serious situation, you know, there's gang warfare and then, you know, these two communities decided to just call it quits so that we could come and film. And we put flyers out and people that wanted to be a part of it from both communities came. And essentially it was a bit of, you know, life imitating art, art imitating life because in the story, the two rival communities come together in this scene. So it was really sort of interesting to have that. My most memorable moment was the love scene because I've never, it was my first love scene. So I was very was nervous. <laughs> It, I was very nervous, right? And so like weeks before I was asking Idris, oh, you know, so how's this gonna work? <laughs> like, what do I need to do? But Amel made me very comfortable. Idris made me very comfortable. It was a close set. It was very funny. He came in my dressing room like a few minutes before and he <coughs> said, you know, sometimes people have a drink before, you know? And like two minutes later, his assistant brought up a bottle of Bayesian rum. This is right after Amel had given me some wine because he knew I was nervous. <laughs> I was partially intoxicated <laughs> going into that scene, but it was very nice. And you know, Amel was very conscious of the fact that I was nervous. It just was very conscious of it as well. And it was great, so. My funniest scene is a guy called Mark Reiner, who's, you know, everyone knows his gladiator. And we had this big fight scene in Jamaica and I meant to bat him up. And I literally mashed my finger up for the rest oh. of the shoot on his face by punching him. So that's my funniest moment in reflection because I'm meant to be a bad man and it, it's just not so. If you've mashed your finger up, does that mean that he's got a scar on his face now? He did have a scar, that's right Mark, you remember that didn't you? He's right by, but I've given him a bit of character now. It's a bad scene, yeah. I was going to ask about the sex scene, if it's a closed set, is it still quite awkward? Like how you obviously have to redo it a few times? It was quite awkward because even though it's a closed set, there's still the cameraman and you know, the light and then of course Idris is in, is in the next room watching it on the monitor. So you're still conscious of people looking at you and then every time they said cut, I'm able to just like draw the sheets over our heads and stuff. The main lesson I learned from doing this film is just how to be comfortable, vulnerable. Um, because you have to remember it's not you, it's the character and what they would do in a natural moment. So I learned a lot just from being in that moment. I bet the rum helped as well. <laughs> it did. How did you find working with Idris on his directorial debut? It was fantastic. You know, I know people say that, but he's such a down-to-earth, salt-of-the-earth mm. type of guy. Very encouraging and fun. Like, he makes a lot of bad jokes a lot. Like, he's a good, bad joker. We had a ball where I've learned, I've become a better actor but also just, just a brilliant collaboration. Do you have a favorite particular bad joke? I enjoy like whenever he believed the scene was like awesome, he'd go like, Selector! <laughs> so we had S shirts selector. that said Selector. I, I brought mine. Did you? I did, yeah. Which was really bad when you think you've done a decent scene and you hear nothing, you're like, Idris? Yeah, you know, right? DJ so Idris? So I go, he's like, <laughs> so he, and he would say, how do you feel? And I'm like, how do you feel? Like, if you're good, yeah. I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I heard that after every, like, good scene, that you'd shout, Selector! <laughs> Is this true? After every good take. It had to be a good take. If it was a good take, Selector! If it, if it wasn't a good take, one more, please. That was it. And I heard you got T-shirts printed with Selector yeah, on it. for the rap party, you know, my gift to the crew was to Selector. I don't know why, as a DJ, when I was growing up, if someone said, Selector, that was means the tune's so good, you have to play it again. It sort of doesn't work with the logic, but when we said Selector, everybody knew that was a good take. What is it about this film in particular that made it want to be your directorial debut? I think it's because it was a book that I read when I was really young, and the character D, I could sort of relate to him a little bit. You know, he's just this kid that, you know, had a trauma. And I didn't have a trauma, but, you know, every kid, 
between the ages of sort of 14 and 19 has massive decisions to make and it's which way do you go. He was also a DJ um, and I grew up in, you know, I literally sort of recreated some of my memories of growing up and going to early blues dances. And I knew that I could make this film because I, I kind of lived some of it. Um, it wasn't like a, a step out, out into um, the abyss. It was something that I sort of grew up in. There was a lot shot in Jamaica and in London. The language is very different and there's just like a slanguage going on. Mm. Slanguage. Slanguage. A slanguage. I like that. Slanguage. Did you have to learn any particular phrases? She had to learn her whole Jamaican accent. She's still in character, then what's wrong with her? You need to stop that now. Tell them you're English. Tell them you're English. <laughs> He is, you know what's funny? Some parts of the film, Amel sound way more Jamaican than like me and Sheldon and Evie who are actually Jamaicans. Because we're conscious of the fact that people have to actually understand you, right? So we're trying to be very standard, but of course Jamaican because it's authentic. But Amel went so, I'm so proud of you, man. Yeah, he yeah. went in with the accent. He <laughs> went you. in, yeah. We loved Idris in the four movies. Would you be up for being in the Marvel Universe or being a superhero? Let's do it today. Yes. We're signing, it is the contract. Yes. Sign. There you go. Yes, yeah, I yeah. want to fly. Yeah. Is there any particular <laughs> superhero that you'd like to be? Blade. I want to redo Wesley Snipes Blade, man. That shit's Listen, so cool. Listen, I wanted to be his daughter. So we're in competition for yes. the Blade? Yes. Well, all right, I wanted to play his there. daughter, you know what I mean? Like something by him too. I can and age I, up. I have to save the I world. I can age up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I you just, can. I two years, you. I get a beard and everything. No, just makeup and hair and, and then boom. And I'll just, you know, I can look so like So I'm going to play Blade and she's going to play Blade's daughter. Mm -hmm.